In this lesson, I'm going to show you a super easy way to draw logarithmic functions. Before we begin, I just want you to write down two quick rules. If you have a log where the this uh, you have a log with a base and then this number is a 1, then that answer is automatically a 0. So whenever this is a 1, then the answer will be a 0, okay? The next thing I want you to write down is if these two are the same, so if you've got this number here and whoops, and this number is exactly the same, then that answer is a 1. You need to just remember that quickly, okay? So we'll just write that down um, because we're going to be coming across that quite a lot. So here's our first example. Let's just quickly write down those two rules that we just said. So if we get something like that, then it's a 0, and then if we have these two numbers as the same, then it's equal to 1. Okay. Perfect. Now, the next thing I want you to do is I always want you to take this part over here, and I always want you to make that equal to three different things. I want you to make it equal to zero, I want you to make it equal to one, and I want you to make it equal to whatever the base is. Okay? So the base in this scenario is three. Got it? Then I want you to go solve each of those equations. So for this one, x would be one, x would be two, and x would be four, if I had to go solve each of those. The next thing I want you to know is that when for this first one, where we made it equal to zero, that is your vertical asymptote. So that means that at one, we're going to have a vertical asymptote. So there, 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 there. Okay, Kevin, you don't have to say there the whole time, dude. We get it. Okay, so that's perfect. Now, what you're going to go do is we need to go find some more points on this graph so that we know what it looks like. So you're going to use these two x values now. So let's start with x equals to two. You're going to go plug x equals to 2 into the original equation, so 2 take away 1, and you're going to end up with y equals to log 3 of 1 add 3. Here's where I want you to use these properties now. The properties say that when you have this number as a 1, then that whole answer, that part there, should be equal to 0. So this is going to be equal to, well, let's write it here. It's going to be equal to, oh, no, I don't have space there, 0 add 3 which is 3. So when x is 2, then y is 3. Let's go plot that. x is 2, y is 3. There we go. Well done, guys. We're doing this. Uh, we're getting it. So let's do the next one. Um, you're going to let x equal to 4. So if x is 4, I'm just going to go replace all of these things here. Then you're going to end up with y equals to log 3 of 3, add 3. And so here we're going to use this property now, where those two numbers are the same. You see that? How do I make sure that those numbers are the same and how did I get all of that correct? It's by using these three little tricks over here that I've showed you. That's how we're doing it, okay? And so I know then that this is just going to give, uh, this first part here is just going to be equal to 1. You see? That's just going to be a 1, add 3, and so that's going to give us a 4. And so when x is 4, y is 4. So when x is 4, y is 4, and now we can draw a graph. So because we have an asymptote, we know that it's going to go next to the asymptote like that. And then this part's just going to keep going like that. Let's do domain and range. So for the domain, that's the x values. We can see that the graph can never go past that x equals to 1. But if you look at this arrow, it'll keep going to infinity. So it goes all the way from 1 up to infinity. It never touches the 1 because it's an asymptote. So we use a round bracket. For the range, it can go all the way down to negative infinity and all the way up to positive infinity. So that's just going to be negative infinity up to positive infinity. Let's do another example. So here we go. Make the x minus 2 equal to 0, make it equal to 1, and make it equal to the base. There we go. Make it equal to 0, make it equal to 1, and make it equal to the base. Okay. Why do I want this to be equal to uh, 0? Well, that's to find the vertical asymptote. Why do I want it equal to 1? Well, that's so that I could use, that's so that I can use this property over here. See, if that's a 1, haha, you see that? If that's a 1, that's why I'm making it a 1. And then there's also this other property where if these two are the same, then we know the answer. So if this is a 5, then I also want this to be a 5, and that's what I'm doing over there. You see, there's a method to how we're saying these things. So now we go solve each of these. So x would be 2, x would be 3, and x would be 7. So if x is 2, that's your vertical asymptote. So you go to x is 2, and then you go plot that. There we go. Now we're going to have to go make x equal to 3, and we're going to go plot that, plug that into our equation. So log 5, 
3 take away 2, add 5, and so that's going to become y equals to log of 5 of 1, add 5. And so here we're getting this nice property that we have over here. So we know that if there's a 1 over here, then that answer is automatically a 0. So we'll say 0, add 5, and that's 5. So when x is 3, y is 5. When x is 3, y is 5. And then let's go do when x is 7. So y equals to log 5, 7 take away 2, add 5. And so y equals to log of 5 of 5, add 5. And so now we can use this property, which says that when those two numbers are the same, then that whole thing is just equal to a 1. And so that's going to be 1 plus 5, which is 6. So when x is 7, y is 6. x is 7, y is 6, so that would be here. And then you can just draw. Whoa, that was skew. Let's do the domain. The domain will always be from the asymptote, so the asymptote is 2 to infinity. The range will always be negative infinity to positive infinity for a logarithmic graph. Here's another one. Now, don't worry about this negative over here. Don't let that make you panic. Just follow the techniques I've showed. So remember what those techniques are. Make this part equal to 0, make it equal to 1, and make it equal to the base. What is the base? The base is 2. Remember these important properties that if you have something like this or like that. So the first one where you make it equal to 0, that's your vertical asymptote. So that would be at x equals to 4. So we're going to draw a vertical asymptote there. The next one is x equals to 5. So we're going to go plug that into our equation. And that is so we can end up with a 1 so that we can use this property of here. So we know that this part is going to be 0. And so that's going to be 0 at 1, which is just 1. So when x is 5, y is 1. When x is 5, y is 1. There we go. Now let's solve this one, so x is 6, so then you plug that into your equation, and so you end up with negative log 2 of 2, add 1, and so you end up with this property, which is this one, so we know that that whole part is just going to be equal to 1, and then you add this one, and so you actually just end up with 0. So when x is 6, y is 0. When x is 6, y is 0. That's there. Ah, so this one's going to look a little different. This one's going to go upwards, like that. So if we look at the domain, the domain will always be from the asymptote, which is 4, to infinity. And the range for a logarithmic will always be negative infinity to positive infinity. So make the x minus 4 equal to 0, make it equal to 1, and make it equal to the base. Okay, then remember the properties, log a of um, 1 is equal to 0, and then log a of a is equal to 1. And so if you had to solve this, x would be 4, that would be your asymptote. If you then solve this one, you get x equals to 5, and if you solve this one, you get x equals to 7. So if we use the 5 one, um, you get 5 minus 4. And so that's going to be log 3 of 1, take away 1. So we can use this property, which means that this whole part is a 0. So that's going to be 0, take away 1, which is negative 1. So when x is 5, y is negative 1. x is 5, y is negative 1. There we go. And then let's use x equals to 7. And so you end up with y equals to log 3 of 3. And so we can use this property now. And so y would be equal to 1, take away 1. And so y would be 0. So when x is 7, y is 0. So that's over there. And now we can go draw it. Something like that. So for the domain, it'll be from the asymptote onwards. And for the range, it would be negative infinity to positive infinity. Here's our last example. So make the bracket equal to 0, make it equal to 1, and make it equal to the base. Now the base is 3. 
Then remember the properties. If you have log a with a one over there, then that's zero. And then if you have an a, and if those two are the same, then that's a one. So if we had to go solve this first one, you would get x is two. That is your um, vertical asymptote. So you go to two. Okay, now if you had to go solve this one, you are gonna end up with x equals to one. If you had to bring the x over and all of that, x would be one. So if you had to then go plug that into the equation, you'd end up with log three of two minus one, which is one, minus one. And so you could use this property, which tells us then that if this is a one, then this whole thing becomes zero. And so that's gonna become zero minus one, which is minus one. So when x is one, y is minus one. So when x is one, y is minus one, there we go. And then go solve this one, you should end up with x equals negative one, because x goes to the right, and then the three goes to the left. So let's go plug that into the equation. Two minus minus one. See, because x is negative one, so there's gonna be two negatives there. Take away one. And so that's gonna be log three of three, take away one. So now we can use this property, which means that this whole part is equal to one, which is zero. So when x is minus one, y is zero. So when x is minus one, y is zero, so that's there. Ah, so this one is gonna go like something like that. So if you had to look at the domain, now be careful, the domain is always the left to the right. So the left, to the right, which is the asymptote. In the previous examples, it went this way. So the asymptote was always labeled first, but it's always the left one to the right one. For the range, that doesn't change. That's still gonna be negative infinity to positive infinity.